Hi, welcome to Antioch Center for the Nations. Excited to be back with you. And this is a continuation of our series on hearing the voice of God. In our first session, we've already covered some basics. I kind of gave you an overview of what we're going to be looking at in this by telling you about the story of the shepherds and the sheep. And we read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, where it says that the sheep knows the, the voice of the shepherd, the voice of a stranger we will not listen to. And we discovered that, in fact, it is our responsibility as we're going through this. So in hearing the voice of God, we looked at that passage in John chapter 10. We know the responsibility of hearing his voice is our responsibility. We cannot put it upon other people. We need to start by discerning these voices. And we read that there are many different kinds of voices out there. But we should test the spirits. and We should be very careful. And we have the five-fold ministry to help us to do that. So as we continue now, we're going to talk about the origins of voices. You know, this passage that says that um, there are, it may seem, so many kinds of voices in the world. And none of them is without signification. In other words, there are many kinds of voices, many kinds of opinions, ideas out there. And I'm going to just cover some of them because it can be very confusing. The origins of voices. In other words, where are these voices coming from? If we are hearing many voices, where are the voices? Who's speaking? A voice is an utterance, right? Uh, it's an aspiration, as in air. You cannot try not to breathe. It, you cannot speak without air. Air passes over the larynx, and our vocal cords then make sound frequencies in the formation of the shape of our mouth, and consonants and vowels blended together make words, and we articulate things that are understood by other human beings. This is called talking. So that's a voice. But the voice comes from different sources. There are different origins. There are three basic sources of the voices in this world concerning our spiritual content of this series. God, man, and Satan. So as we consider this, let's start with God. The first and most important voice we hear is God's voice. Since the beginning, he has spoken to man. For this very reason, God created man. God created man for fellowship. God created man to talk to, meaning two-way communication with words. After he made man, it says that Adam would talk to him. They would talk to each other. They hung out to have conversations. And I think this is really interesting when we look at it from a foundational level of the sources of voices. God made man to talk to. God made man to have fellowship with him and communicate. You know, I have friends here on earth, friends that I'm close to, and I will say this. The more that I talk to someone, the closer I grow to them. The less that I talk to someone, the more separated we become. We know the importance of communication, consistent communication, clarity of communication. Now let's apply that to a relationship with God, of course. And God made us not only with the capacity to talk and communicate, but that is the reason why we were made to begin with. You weren't made as this sculpture for God to say, look what I can do. You were made to talk. You were made to communicate with God. And God is the origin of all things. He created all things. He is always, and therefore, he's the first voice the biggest voice, the most important voice. He's the voice of voices, you could say. And he's speaking. This means two-way communication, by the way. He's not just a speaker. We're not listening to a radio, but it's more like a telephone. We receive, but we also are expected to speak, to interrogate. We ask questions, inquiries, and words are given back. God can do that. We just read it. In John chapter 10, where Jesus said that the voice of the shepherd we listen to, we are the sheep, we hear his voice. So the first and most important fact, God's voice on these three basic sources, the voice, the first voice spoken is the voice that said what? Let there be light. Boom. And the universe came into existence. 
So that's the first and most important origin of all voices is God's. Well, the next one we're going to look at, and I'm, I do them in a little different order than I said, is Satan's voice. Man's voice, yes, but I'm going to come back to that after. Let's just uh, think about uh, Satan's voice in this case. Yep. Satan speaks, uh, starting in the garden. So I'm looking at it chronologically, right? First, God spoke, let there be light. And he m took from that matter, and he made the earth, and he made the garden, and he put the trees in there, and he made man. And then that is the first voice speaking. And then man became the second voice speaking. But then another voice outside of our voice spoke. And whose voice was that? It was Satan's voice in the garden. Starting in the garden, Satan has been an active voice in the life of man. He is constantly speaking through a myriad of spirits that he controls. His demons, his minions that he controls are all vocal platforms for him. And he speaks through. In fact, it's interesting to note that the word spirits means breaths. Spirit is pneuma in Greek, breath. Remember I said that a voice cannot speak unless there's air passing through. A breath has to pass through the larynx. So also, Satan speaks through breaths, through spirits, a spirit traveling through, manifesting through a conduit that can be heard in our minds. It has to come through the mouth. That's why the vocal apparatus is a necessary emitter of that. So yes, Satan speaks. He can speak to your mind. We have to take thought every cap, uh, take captive every thought that is coming from him, but he speaks to our mind. Remember that the spirits that whisper in our ears are lying spirits. In fact, um, second, in uh, Second Thessalonians 2 9, it calls them lying wonders, but it means that he lies to us on many levels. He lies, his lies are intellectual lies. Satan's voice is is intelligent. Never think that Satan is going to speak ignorantly or foolishly or stupidly. No, he speaks very wisely and the words are formulated to suit you as an individual. Think of the first time he spoke was in the garden with Eve. And Eve was there um, uh, told, Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They could eat all the fruit, but not that one. You remember in Genesis 3 what happens. He, he comes and he says to the woman, well, hey, you can eat all this fruit? And she says, yes, we can eat all this fruit, except for the fruit from this tree. Oh, well, why can't you eat that fruit? Well, well, because if we eat it, we will die. And Satan begins speaking lies by saying, no, it's not true. It's not true. Because God knows that in the moment you eat it, you'll be like him. And you see, he's got a monopoly on his godness, and so therefore he's controlling it and not willing to share it. See, he's crafty. He did this, and he injected thoughts that were seeds to contaminate Eve's mind to look at the fruit and begin to want it more and more. His lies are intellectual. So, so far we've seen God speaks, yes. Satan speaks, Yes, but now another category, the third one we're looking at is the middle one there, man. Man speaks. And when man speaks, he speaks on in different ways. Uh, first, we speak, you could say, to ourselves. We do. Uh, and it's important that we understand it as we speak to ourself. We can tell ourselves many confusing, sometimes convincing things, Right? God gave us the ability to reason and to intellectually consider the things that we do here on earth. We're not stupid. The problem enters when we replace the voice of the Lord with our voice. In other words, we start listening to ourselves. And this, with the increase of intellect in a given individual, with the height of the IQ of an individual, so also comes the danger of being misguided by your own voice. And a lot of people that get into error are in error because they're just too darn smart. So we listen to ourselves. God gave us this ability to reason and to think, conjecture. In fact, sometimes we think out loud. Do you ever think out loud? Hmm, if I choose option A, then likely 
You know, my dad used to always speak to himself. My mother would speak to herself sometimes. Uh, I talked to myself all the time. Sometimes I'd call myself Stephen. Stephen, don't be so stupid. Did you ever do that? Did you ever talk to yourself and say, Stephen, stop that, or whatever your name is? You call yourself because we have that ability. Very important. Often in the prophetic realm, in fact, that is when the Holy Spirit, capital S or capital P for pneuma, when the holy breath wants to breathe through us out of our spirit, um, in the prophetic realm, we may prophesy, we speak, we speak God's spirit. But when that the spirit of the Lord is no longer the one forced through our larynx or through our vocal apparatus, there's only other source would be either a demon spirit speaking through us or our own voice. So dangerous it can be. Ezekiel 13, 3 says, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. So Ezekiel spoke about these prophets that were false prophets in the day that were prophesying out of their own breath, their own pneuma, their own spirit. So what would that be like? Well, and why? Let's say, why would a prophet speak by his own? Because he wants to manipulate a given situation. He wants to control something. Maybe there's an advantage to him pretending that what he's saying is God. Well, see, we do this to ourselves. What did Eve do in the garden? She spoke to herself. She considered. She looked at the fruit and thought about it. And she began to talk to I can hear a conversation between Eve and Eve in the garden concerning the fruit. After the lying spirit spoke to her from Lucifer, then she was thinking. She saw that it was a beautiful fruit, something delightful, something to be desired, something to be valued as a source of gaining knowledge of good and evil. So she had to conjecture this on her own. She was listening at first to Satan, but then to herself. And that's the way it usually happens. Satan just plants a seed... And then we listen to our own voice. And as it said in Ezekiel, woe unto the foolish prophets. Watch yourself. Be careful in speaking to yourself. Now, another one of the human places that, that we will hear is, of course, others. People will speak to us. Uh, people have a tremendous amount of influence in our lives. Remember in the first session, I talked about our over-dependence upon pastors and leaders to speak to us, thinking that we hear God's voice through those people and those people only, very dangerous because of the risk that we're talking about now in the origin of voices. Uh, many prophesy falsely even though their intention may be pure. I can be misguided. In fact, I have as a rule of thumb, I won't prophesy to people that I know unless God absolutely insists. It's easy for me to prophesy to people I don't know. Often I'll see people I've never seen before in a given church service and, and a, by the prophetic anointing that's upon me, I will speak to them because I see things and it's easy. Why? Because I don't know anything about them. and They're not in my mind and heart, so I can't get confused and I speak. So that's one way that others speak. I can speak as a prophet or in a prophetic flow to someone and you can hear God speak through them. That's an origin of a voice, but we have to be careful because of human error. In the next section, we, we're going to see how to recognize the voice of God when it comes from man. But right now we're talking about the origins of voices again. There are three sources, God, man, Satan. God, Man said, God speaks, let there be light. All things begin with that. Man speaks, speaks to themselves. Satan speaks. Satan spoke to Eve in the garden. She was misguided, misdirected, not by so much what, what it was just the beginning. Satan or a demon just places the first step. And if we cooperate it and do not take captive those thoughts that come in from outside, then we end up speaking to ourselves, tricking ourselves, and other people can also deceive us. Uh, think of the story where the prophet was going and God told the prophet, do not turn to the left or to the right, but only do what I tell you to do and do not stop until your mission is complete. And he went and people, try, remember the prophet tried to stop him and the prophet was given a word by God to stop him, but the prophet lied. Actually, an angel told him. And so that would be like a demon spirit planting the thoughts and the prophet told the other prophet that you're to come to my house and stay with me 
Although God says, don't stay anywhere, don't stop, he failed to listen. Instead, he replaced the command of God with the influence of a human voice that was actually the influence of a demon or an angel. He said, he didn't say the Lord told me, he said an angel told me. He brought him into his house and as a result, that prophet ended up dying the next day. These are the things that happen when we listen to the wrong voices. And that is our, our responsibility again. Remember, we're under that heading of our responsibility to hear the voice of God. Do not listen to the voice of a stranger, but learn to discern, learn to recognize God's voice. In our next session, we're going to see the three characteristics of God's voice. We're going to talk about recognizing His voice in different realms, but uh, right now, I just want to close up with the idea of our responsibility in recognizing, understanding, remember the origin of voices from, from man, from ourselves, from Satan or demons. We need to discern it is indeed our, our responsibility of hearing his voice. Amen. And as I close uh, this Second session, I want to pray that we would rise to this responsibility and understand it. Lord, help us to understand the origin of voices as we've studied in this session. And we can ask the question, and in later sessions it will be easier to discern, but the question is, where is the voice coming from? We say we hear a voice, where is it coming from? Is it from you, Lord? Is it from Satan or the demons? Or is it from man? And if it is from man, is it from ourselves? Or is it from someone else that's not speaking on your behalf? It's so important that we learn how to recognize this. And this is part of our discovery in this course on hearing your voice. So Lord, continue to help us to learn it. Let what we've covered so far be sealed to our hearts as we're learning in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me in this second session on hearing the voice of God. And I look forward to seeing you in the third and next session. God bless you.